Hello, everyone. We're back with another episode of the Best of Branded Content, our lightning rounds, sponsored by Social News Desk. And we have the expert from Social News Desk with us today. We've got April Palali, Head of Innovation at Social News Desk. Uh, she's going to be sharing some incredible advice, best practices, just great ideas, uh, what she's seen work for branded content on Facebook and social media platforms. April, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Julia. Really excited to be here and talk through this. Well, let's go ahead and hear a little bit about what you're seeing is, is really the, the things to do and the things not to do uh, if, you know, when you're focusing on branded content for social media. Absolutely. So, so when I'm working in the branded content space, I've been working in local media for over 20 years. So what I've seen is just gonna go through today is some just some best practices to really uh, get better performance, better oomph for the campaigns that you're doing. Um, so we're gonna go through five tips of common things that I see either go wrong in a campaign or just so that you could do better to see more success. So um, as we know, branded content campaigns are really great campaigns for clients. When you do branded content with a publisher and actually share content on social with a publisher, it performs 25 to 55% better than if the client just shared that, that content themselves. And this is a stat from Nielsen, and that's really powerful in the results that these publishers and newsrooms can be, bring. Um, plus, on top of it, it's even more sa it's safer than if you're working with an influencer, something in that space. Stations are the original influencers, but they are, have tried and true and trusted brands, where a lot of these influencers that are popping up on TikTok and Instagram, it's hard to say who their audience is or if they'll be around tomorrow. Um, so I really love working with the publishers on this piece because it's a great opportunity for both clients and publishers. So jumping into the quick five best practice here, Number one is making sure you use clear client branding on any campaign you do. And I, this happens a lot as sponsorship pieces specifically. So maybe not as much in direct ads promotions for the clients, but when you're doing sponsorship of news content, a lot of times the branding isn't clear enough in, in the campaigns I'm seeing. And you don't get a lot of value for the client. It shouldn't be a game of where's Waldo to try to find the grant branded uh, content partner. It really should be plain and people should be able to see it. So just to give you a quick example, um, this example with News Channel 5 from Nashville, they did a partnership with Hughes Coleman Injury Lawyers here. Um, it's the only integration and the only really note or head nod to the client is that tag at the top there where it says with Hughes Coleman Injury Lawyers. That's really not enough to give value for the client. They're not going to see people uh, really searching out their brand. They're not going to see brand lift or engagement around that. It needs to be an extra layer beyond just that. Um, and what's also important to note is that sometimes Facebook actually doesn't even show that tag. There's placements on Facebook where it just says paid partnership. So you know there's a partner, but it doesn't actually show up and say who it's with unless you hover on the icon in the upper right, and then you could see who the partner is. But again, it's not a hide and seek game. It really needs to be clear in the promotion who's sponsoring who the partner is. And that doesn't mean it takes away from the content. It just means that it actually gives value for who you're partnering with. So in this example, what I would do is actually uh, include a larger logo from the client in the lower right instead of the Sky 5 logo, since you already have the newsroom's logo at the top. Um, a couple other things to note. It's important with these logos be easy and integrations be easy to read on mobile. 90% um, of uh, these, the impressions and the reach that we get on these campaigns happen on mobile devices. So make sure that it is legible in that format. And if you're doing a video segment, you should have the branding throughout because sometimes people pop in or see different parts of a video or especially with Facebook Lives, they may come in in the middle of the Facebook Live. So you really wanna make sure that that logo and branding's up the whole time. So a couple examples here that I, I like to look at. Um, so this first example from Spock, Fox Sports Board is actually one of my favorite examples and performed really well in the local uh, space. So that not only do they tag uh, Duncan in the copy here, but they actually have a hashtag that they integrate that says Duncan Don't Stop. And they have a box in addition, uh, a, a little box that they've created that has the information about the player performance and has the Duncan logoing on it. And the last item here is in the headline, they also say Duncan Field Performance. 
So it's nicely integrated. It doesn't take away from the content, but there's multiple pieces. And that by the end of it, I really feel like I need another cup of coffee from Duncan. And I'm thinking about that. And that's what we want. We just want that subtle push where you're thinking about coffee, thinking about a donut, and, and, and especially if it's earlier in the day, which is still is a little bit here. Um, and the example at the right, uh, this example from PIX11, what I love is they just took a really good clear lower third in this and took the client's logo so it's nice and legible. And they included a little bit more information about the client furniture delivery in three days or less and a, and a URL for more information. Very easy to read. This stayed up for the entire uh, Facebook Live. So no matter when you jumped into the piece, you'd be able to see this and actually see who the client sponsor is. Um, and the other important thing to note is the logo for the client is on the left-hand side of this, because if you put it on the right-hand side, you have the audio icon that might end up over top the client's logo or that eye icon that tells you what branded content is. So it's always make sure you have the client's logo on the left so they don't have a Facebook overlay on top of it. So the next piece here is, is really talking about using compelling creative. A lot of times when clients give us a uh, copy creative to use, it's not always what's best for social. And I have a good friend who always likes to say, just because we can do something for a client doesn't mean we should. Um, so thinking about that, we actually can make the client's campaign better if we push back on them gently and say no, say no but, give them an alternative and, and really help them understand what will work better. Um, so here's three examples, and I actually went um, to Facebook and looked for examples of branded content that were performing rather low, underperforming for those station pages. And if you can tell, the common three theme between all of these are is that the client really took their banner ad and put them on social. Um, they didn't create something that made sense for social. So while you can, absolutely can do this, we don't recommend this. Um, I always joke, especially in TV, you would never take your radio ad and put it on television. It's the same thing for social. You would never take your TV ad and put it on social. You'd never take your print or your digital ad and put it here. You can, but it's not going to perform well. You're not going to see the best results. So what we did here is I actually took and reimagined these pieces and just kind of uh, brainstormed what you could do. Same messaging, but what you could do if you did them for social. So in this next example here, what you'll see is the same three ads, same three product promotions, but reimagined to, do, uh, to see what they would look like for social to perform better. Um, each one of these, what you'll notice is, is they all utilize one by one square creative. The best opportunity you'll see to get performance on social is to, uh, and take up the most real estate is to use a square or one by one image or video because you can actually get more room, a larger ad, and something that people are more likely to stop with in the feed. Um, additionally, each one of these have links for more information. Instead of trying to put all the copy in, in the piece, we provide additional, if people are interested, where they can go to learn more. Um, and in each of those links, there's actually a, 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 um, an emoji that kind of calls it out, a little bit of color in those headlines, because then we draw people into that call to action. They take a look at it and they're more likely to click. So going through each of these and really comparing the before and after, what we originally had here for the automotive ad looks very much like what you would put on a banner ad on digital or something that was in the newspaper. It's also kind of blurry, not the greatest resolution. But you note that we're actually promoting the Ford Explorer here from DND Motors. So when you took and redid that, I actually took just a stock image of two kids looking rather cramped in an automobile and really cute to get mom's attention. When you're going to buy a Ford Explorer, it's typically moms and typically families that are going to, uh, going to use this. They really want the third row seating um, for it because they need to have more room for their kids. So I actually focused in on that pain point specifically, showcased it in an image and called it out in the copy. So running out of room, D&D Ford Motors has a new 2020 Ford Explorer with more space for hauling your little ones and all their stuff. Um, if you focus in on the pain point that your solution solves and have a cute image with it, you're going to see much better results than just putting a price point and kind of copy onto the piece. Um, the second example here that you see with uh, the Bridgewater chocolates, again, um, when you look at the banner ad that we were provided, it has a lot of copy, a lot of text, very hard to read on a mobile device. Um, but instead, I just went to the client's Facebook page grabbed images they had already posted on their Facebook page. So they already had this imagery available 
And then I created a really quick video. And this is not like, I am no video master whatsoever. This is just a slideshow of really quick still images that I, I compiled together to capture your attention. And I, my sweet tooth is all acting up every time I watch this video and I really, really wanna bite into those chocolate pretzels. And at the end of the day, that's gonna get people to purchase more when you actually get them to want, want and kind of crave this chocolate for it. Um, so that's a great way. And again, this isn't high, we, we don't need Emmy award producing video. I always joke, joke with my boyfriend who has won several Emmys. My social videos perform better than you um, and I can knock them out in 15 minutes. Um, and the last example here that we have for this uh, law firm and the injury attorneys, in the ad that we were looking at previously, uh, it very much looked like an ad that people are mostly gonna scroll past in their feed. Um, so we took this, this piece here that people would just kind of scroll back and be past and be annoyed by because it's just an ad in their feed. And we reimagined it to look more like a news story and some information that you actually need to get from a news station. So looking at this here, a couple of things that we did with it, um, we actually added the client's logo, very big and, and bold at the bottom, so it's very easy to read on a mobile device. That could have really gotten small and hard to read if you're not careful, so making sure it, it's clear branding there is important. Um, focused in again, you know, FDA has announced a cancer-causing substance, make it, made it look like a news promotion. And also we added some motion to it, added some B-roll in the background uh, to have the pills drop. And so you, it catches people's attention. Again, not just some stock B-roll, nothing special in there that I added on the top so people scrolling by would catch their attention as they went through. Um, again, just thinking differently. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. It's just thinking differently and really thinking, hey, what would get me to share something? What would get me to get my attention as I scroll through the newsfeed? So a couple more notes on compelling creative. Really, when you're, when you're talking about it, when you're trying to create uh, creative for social, it's important that, to note your thumb is in control. As people scroll past, the thumb is in control of what you're looking at. So at the end of the day, you want thumb stopping creative. You want to get them to pay attention and see what you're creating. And if you get them to notice it, they're much more likely to interact, purchase, and engage. Um, as we, we already mentioned, square and vertical uh, images and video. It's also important to test multiple creatives. A lot of people will uh, see a video and be more engaged. Some people like still images and don't want to actually deal with, with a video. So making sure to test a couple different elements, if a couple different pain points, different pieces of copy, you're going to see some data and get information about the right decisions to make for those people. Um, short social copy is also important. So when you're on social, Instagram and Facebook both know that you don't, that people don't want too much text. So they actually give you a, a continue reading, reading button if the text gets longer than a sentence or two. So keeping it short to the point, like we did in the examples above, focus on the main point and then give them a link for more information and you'll see the best results. Additionally on that, having a conversation and starting a conversation in the copy can really, really see even better performance. So one campaign I ran for um, Food Lion is they were giving away free groceries for a year and they actually wanted the copy to say, win free groceries for a year, don't miss out, sign up today. Typical standard promotional copy that you would use. And we said, great, we're gonna run that, but we're also going to run an addition. We're gonna ask people, what would you do if you won free groceries for a year from Food Lion? Funny enough, when we asked people, we had hundreds of people tell us what they would do if they won those free groceries. And that caused actually three times the entries into the contest because people were sharing, people were seeing other people comment on this post, people were seeing that engagement and it just generated more and powerful results from it. So at the end of the day, really thinking and social will drive even better benefits for you. Um, the last two, two bullets here is one designed for sound off. Only about 15% of people are listening to audio on, on Facebook and Instagram when they're watching videos. Either A, they're in a place where it doesn't, it's not uh, cohesive, like work or something where they, it's not cohesive to having audio on. Or two, they just prefer that silence. They don't really want to listen to the piece. They want to be able to just read and kind of move on from there. Um, you, so you saw in the video examples I created, neither one of them had audio. I absolutely could have layered it in as addition. But since so few people listened to it, I didn't take the time to worry about that element.
And then the last piece is designing for mobile. Uh, we've mentioned this before, but these are all going to be served on mobile devices. So previewing with there, making sure your copy works best there and doesn't get cut, cut off is important. So this one we kind of touched on, but on social, it's important to be social and engaged, funny enough. Um, one of the things clients often forget or don't think about is when they're doing a social campaign with newsrooms is that they should be watching and engaging with the comments. The best clients do this. The best clients will watch this and make sure to respond and engage with this. But a lot of the other ones are still new and are afraid to kind of go lean into this place. They're afraid to say anything in, in this. So when a campaign goes really, really well, you will see engagements and comments uh, like this one here on the Natural Bridge Caverns campaign. So people will tag their friends and family and say, we gotta check out this place. We have to uh, go when I get back. Um, and they'll just have those conversations. If a client leans in and actually engages and provides more information or answers questions within this, they're actually gonna see even better results because people are going to understand that they care and they really wanna make contact with them and, and that have that conversation. Um, for the most part, we see great engagement and the potential to even convert comments uh, into real leads, into real business for this. So this conversation is really important. But there are times where conversations can go off the rails. Um, we are in social and there are a lot of trolls out there. And we are also in a very politically charged environment right now. So talking about that, a couple best practices and things you'll see. Number one, you'll see a competitor come in on a client's uh, comments and start to kind of try to take the conversation and spam it, uh, spam the conversation to really put out their products and services. So thinking about that and thinking about what you would do if that would happen, will you hide those comments? Will you talk, I mean, would you want that to be happening? The client's not going to be happy about that for the most part. Our recommendation is if you get something like that, you would hide it from the page because it is spam. And if, if someone continues to do that, you would actually uh, ban them from the conversation and the page as a whole. Um, now, if it's polite and they're just providing additional information, you may have a different take on that. Another thing that will happen is, especially in the uh, political environment we are in, oftentimes, even if you have ads that aren't political related, they will go off uh, the rails um, on politi politics or things around that, like wearing what you, or you should wear a mask or not wear a mask and those type items. It's important to watch those conversations and those comments just to monitor and see what's, what's happening. We also recommend that you have a page policy for comments for your newsroom as a whole if you don't already. And then when those comments and those conversations go off the rail, you can refer to it and remove and ban any people that really take it too far. <coughs> the last thing that you will see is that you will get a complaint about the business. You have a former customer that isn't happy or has had something happen. In this case, our best practice and recommendation is to have the client reach out and respond, acknowledge the user, provide additional avenues for them to follow up and have that conversation and dialogue. You'll see much better results if you acknowledge the user and provide solutions um, for them to have a real conversation offline than you will if you would hide or just try to avoid those types of posts. So tip four, leverage targeted ads. Facebook, Instagram ads can be a great element to layer on top of what you're doing with the uh, branded content space, especially if you have a campaign that is much more narrow in focus. Um, organic posts work great, and so the example that we were looking at with Natural Bridge Caverns, that could be great as an organic post because it has a very, very broad audience around it. Um, but when you're doing with something that is much more narrow, targeted ads can actually help you pr pr uh, produce even better results. Um, so this is a, an, an older example of a post, but just to give you a case study here, this uh, promotion with WFTV, when it was done several years ago, what they did is they actually posted organically. Um, it performed really bad. Um, there's not, because the targeted audience for it is not your general user. It's really the audience that would reach out and engage with this type of promotion is 50 plus and someone that has issues with kidney disease. That's not your traditional fan base on your newsroom. So when it was posted, it kind of bombed. Um, nothing against the content, it was just not the right audience. And as you know, if you don't have the right audience, you're not going to see success. Um, I like to think of organic posts, typical to like what you would have is run a site banners on your website. You're not targeting anyone specific, just anyone who comes to the website that day or is viewing it might get the ad. 
where when you do targeted ads on Facebook, you can actually get the right audience, the right age, the right demographics you need to reach. So when this didn't perform really well, we converted it to a paid targeted ad and actually just put a small budget behind it. And the results were amazing. Um, again, we targeted to people 50 plus that had kidney disease. And um, the specifically, the goal was to talk to people about diets and making sure that they're protecting their uh, eating good diets when they have kidney disease. So we had 95 shares on this story, which is actually really powerful for such a small niche piece. That's, it's, it, that's amazing. And we had 19 comments on, and, and several hundred engagements. What was great is one of the comments was a story. It was actually a, a, a user that had worked with the Lambda Clinical Research Center, had seen great results, and, and just shared the power of the work they had done. And we are actually able to take that story from the comments and turn it into a second piece of branded content and kind of a follow-up story from there. So the last piece here is, is this discuss approved categories. And I love this piece because there's, there's all kinds of categories and Facebook has all kinds of ad policies and they're, they're all over the place and crazy. So it's important to really think about categories in, in, in this space, especially with branded content. Um, some of them, some of the categories Facebook will allow and won't allow, and then some of them your station or newsroom may allow or not allow. So thinking about categories is important having that discussion. So going through uh, the three categories here, so the first column is categories that are perfect for social media and work well on the platform. Um, the second will be categories that have restrictions that you absolutely can run in, but they have either targeting or age restrictions, or they have pre-approvals you have to go through before you can run ads. And the last section is kind of completely prohibited and off limits uh, section that you are not going to want to go down. But I don't think too many of you are selling body parts with your branded content, so I'm not too worried about that one. <laughs> That's a scary one right there. So a couple more details here. Uh, with the perfect for social, we see great results in entertainment, food and beverage, retail, consumer product goods, home services. Uh, home services can be great, especially if you're telling stories. People at ho are at home more than ever now, so telling stories about those pain points and really engaging with that content is, is a really a great opportunity right now. Um, healthcare, professional services like banking, credit unions, pieces around that. Education and automotive, you can see great success in all of those categories with no worry about any of the ads that you're creating in that space. Um, however, some of the categories to look out for in the restriction section, the first three here, housing, employment, and credit, if you are doing paid targeted ads with those specifically, you have to um, very, be very specific in your targeting because of legal laws around anti-discrimination. You don't want to discriminate against any specific audiences. So Facebook won't allow you to do any age targeting, gender targeting, or and your detailed targeting will be very limited in this space. Um, specifically when you're linking to an employment application or a credit application in the content that you're providing. Also note with the housing piece, this also applies to retirement housing. So you will have to take out um, ads in the retirement housing place. They will have to be targeted to people 18 plus, um, even though an 18 year old is not going to be uh, looking at a retirement center anytime soon, or at least we hope. Um, alcohol is allowed, but that must be 21 plus in the US and whatever other countries you would use, it would have to be that follow that age. Dating, real money, gambling, state lotteries, online pharmacies, promotion of over-the-counter drugs, drug and alcohol, addiction and treatment are all allowed, but they require you to fill out a form with Facebook and get some approvals ahead of time. And that can take up to a month or 30 days. So if you're working in anything in that space, please plan for extra time. Um, and the last item here with uh, cosmetic procedures and weight loss. Um, I see great success in these campaigns. It's just uh, you need to note a couple of different things in the creative it, that you're, you're creating in that space, especially if you're doing a video, you need to pay attention to Facebook's rules because you'll be work, reworking the video several times if you don't. So a couple of things to, to note here. With cosmetic procedures, you would need to target people 21 plus um, to make sure that you're not telling 18 year olds they, they need to actually get you know, their body changed already. Um, you cannot have before and after photos in them. You cannot zoom in on body parts specifically, and you can't make guarantees that are kind of outrageous or just not achievable, like you would lose 100 pounds in a day. Um, so thinking about that and taking a closer look at any of the details are important in this space. We do think, see things like cool sculpting 
and pieces like that work really well, but you need to pay a little bit more attention to the rules here. Um, so talking to the prohibited space, for the most part, you're not going to do much of this in branded content anyways, but a couple things that I will point out that I have had come up over the years. Um, so any of the, in the drug related category, Facebook prohibits any of this type of piece, especially CBD. Facebook's rules and policies are even if marijuana is legal at the local level, at, until it's federalized, they will not allow anything for marijuana or CBD oil on, on their ads platform. So you can sometimes post organically, but if you're doing any ads of any kind, you will see Facebook uh, completely deny those. Um, in adults, products or services, sometimes what will come up is ED, um, uh, erectile dysfunction or vaginal rejuviation in those places. Sometimes you'll want, some stations will want to do branded content there. I have not, it's very, very hard to get ad approvals in that space also. So one something that you'd want to test and work on ahead of time if you are going to try to go down that route. And that's really my, my tips, Joya. That was amazing. I, just looking at these category lists, we could probably do an entire 45 minute session just on what to do in this, in, in this white screen right here. Is this, <laughs> it's a massive amount of information. Yes, it is so true. Oh, you know, thank you. Thank you, April. And thank you to the whole social news desk team, really just for, for sponsoring the series and, and all your great advice. Um, you guys always are a wealth of information and, and always, gear, you know, set, definitely sending us in the right direction in all cases. So we appreciate all the guidance and advice and fabulous ideas you shared today. Well, thank you. We really do want to make an impact in the branded content space for local media and really make it easy. My joke is, is that we go out and sell the dream, but then we need to execute the nightmare. So at Social News Desk, we're really working to build education and especially technology with our campaigns manager to really make life easier for uh, the newsrooms that we work with. Well, it was awesome today. And thank you as always. I uh, appreciate all the good work you guys are doing and, and we're glad we have you for advice. Awesome, thank you. All right, thanks.